Chapter 13 Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him three thousand men of Israel, whereof two thousand were with Saul in Michmash and in Mount Bethel, and a thousand were with Jonathan in Gibeah of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Geba, and the Philistines heard of it. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten the garrison of the Philistines, and that Israel also was had an abomination with the Philistines. And the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, thirty thousand chariots and six thousand horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Michmash, eastward from beth Aven. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And Samuel arose, and gat him up from Gilgal unto Gibeah of Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about six hundred men. And Saul and Jonathan his son, and the people that were present with them, abode in Gibeah of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped in Michmash. And the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned unto the way that leadeth to Ophrah, unto the land of Shuel. And another company turned the way to Beth Horon. And another company turned to the way of the border that looketh to the valley of Zeboim toward the wilderness. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share and his coulter and his axe and his mattock. Yet they had a file for the mattocks and for the coulters and for the forks and for the axes and to sharpen the goads. So it came to pass in the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and with Jonathan his son was there found. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the passage of Michmash. Psalm 80 Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh stir up thy strength, and come and save us. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, and givest them tears to drink in great measure. Thou makest us a strife unto our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen, and planted it. Thou preparedst room before it, and didst cause it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like the goodly cedars. She sent out her boughs unto the sea, and her branches unto the river. Why hast thou then broken down her hedges, so that all they which pass by the way do pluck her? The boar out of the wood doth waste it, and the wild beast of the field doth devour it. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven, and behold, and visit this vine, and the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself. 
It is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. So will not we go back from thee. Quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Good morning and a successful day to you. The hymn writer wrote, Lord, in the morning thou shalt hear my voice ascending high. To thee will I direct my prayer. To thee lift up mine eyes. What a beautiful day God has given us. Whether it is raining or there is sunshine or snow, it is still a beautiful day. Why? Because we are alive to see it. And we know that God has been good to us. Today we are focusing on 1 Samuel chapter 13 and Psalm 80. Psalm 80 and 1 Samuel chapter 13. So I'm reading 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 7 to verse 14. The Bible says, And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. And he tarried seven days, and he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash, therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Today's message is entitled, Too Busy to Wait, Too Busy to Wait. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. We pray now that you will apply these truths to our hearts and to our spiritual lives in a special way. Speak through your word, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The Selitar Mall. The Selitar Mall is a suburban shopping mall located in Fornville, Singapore, next to the Fornville LRT station. Upset that his order was taking too long, a man started shouting at staff of a fast food restaurant in the Salitar Mall. According to the news, the incident happened at Texas Chicken Restaurant on Friday, April 17, 2020, at around 7.30 p.m. The man was identified as a fast food delivery rider based on what the man had been carrying. The man scolded the staff non-stop when they were just doing their job and were already super stressed out from the incoming flood of orders. Someone observing said he is very impatient because he had only waited 20 minutes or so when he lost his temper. There were others who had waited two hours. In a video, the man can be heard shouting at an employee. The staff wanted to call the police as he was making a big ruckus. The police were not called, but mall security came. In the end, the man just walked off while still making noise here and there. We seem to be living in a very impatient modern society. 
But then, according to Courtney Kaidila, sometimes waiting can be bad. One Courtney Cidella wrote an article entitled, How Long Is Too Long To Wait For Someone? How Long Is Too Long To Wait For Someone? The article says, How long is too long to wait for his call? To sit by the phone and wonder if he is ignoring your text or truthfully left his phone at home? How long is too long to wait to go to sleep when your eyes are so heavy but your mind is racing with thoughts of what he is doing in that exact moment? How long is too long to wait to make other plans when you had a special evening planned together but he is nowhere to be found? How long is too long to wait to date again? To finally admit to yourself that it is time to move on. How long is too long to wait for Mr. Wrong to become Mr. Right? How long will you be waiting for an answer to the simple question of how long is too long? How long is too long to wait for your boyfriend to make you a marriage proposal? And how long is too long to wait for your girlfriend to say, yes, she will marry you? There are no easy answers to those important questions, but God has promised wisdom. In James chapter 1 verse 5, he has promised guidance in Psalm 32 verse 8. God has promised courage in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 so that we can act and make the correct decision at the right time. Friend of mine, we seem to be living in a time when people don't seem to have time to wait. We say again, we seem to be living in a time when people don't seem to have time to wait. However, in the spiritual arena, it pays to wait on God. In the spiritual arena, friend of mine, it pays to wait on God. Time spent waiting on God is never wasted time. We say again, time spent waiting on God is never wasted time. If we wait beyond the time when God says to act, now that is a problem. But if God says wait, friend of mine, you would do well to wait. Now, first, Samuel chapter 13 reminds us of the danger we place ourselves in when we refuse to wait on God when God says wait. You see, friend of mine, upon anointing Saul king, Samuel the prophet had instructed him to go to Gilgal and wait for him there. For Samuel chapter 10 and verse 8 says, Samuel said, And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and, behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry, till I come to thee, and show thee what thou shalt do. Now, if he did not wait on Samuel, Saul would not only miss his presence, but he would also miss the instruction that Samuel wanted to pass on to him. Samuel the prophet had told Saul clearly, Wait till I come to thee, and show thee what thou shalt do. The Bible mentions in 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 8, And he, Saul, tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. Now the phrase, tarried seven days, does not necessarily mean that Saul had already waited seven full days and that Samuel did not arrive till the beginning of the eighth day, and was therefore a day late in meeting the appointment. It is quite possible that when the prophet did not appear during the early part of the appointed day, Saul assumed the responsibility of offering the sacrifice. Samuel did, however, arrive soon after the time appointed for the sacrifice, only to discover Saul's act of disobedience, according to 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 10. You see, friend of mine, in predicting Israel's request for a king, Moses had warned that the ruler was not to multiply horses, that is, to trust in material equipment for protection. According to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 16, Isaiah chapter 31 and verse 3. On the contrary, 
the king as leader of the nation and an example to the people was to procure a copy of the law, become a diligent student of it, and obey the instruction they recorded. Now King Saul apparently did not follow the counsel. Lacking military equipment matching that of the Philistines, and with no weapons on which to rely, Saul's men, with clearer sight than that of Saul, could see no basis on which to expect victory. The prospect appeared hopeless. Thus it was that at the first intimation of real danger, the major part of Saul's army deserted out of fear for their personal safety and left him with no more than 600 men at Gilgal. Saul's scouts had brought word of the concentration of the enemy about half a mile away at Michmash, and Saul feared not only for the nation but also for his own safety. It seems as if Saul was ready to lay blame for the situation completely on Samuel who had failed to appear. Saul must have felt aggrieved that Samuel was not present, and in this spirit he met the prophet with no offer of apology but rather in a spirit of self-justification. Saul said in essence, I saw the situation and I had to offer the sacrifice. Saul was rebuked and lost his kingdom because he failed to follow a simple instruction to wait, to wait. You see, friend of mine, when like King Saul, we do not prayerfully wait on God and hurry away to make our own decisions and to survive the best way we can, we miss, number one, God's presence to encourage us, and two, we miss God's counsel. We would never know what God would have told us. We say that again. When, like King Saul, we do not prayerfully wait on God and we hurry away to make our own decisions and survive the best way we can, we miss, number one, God's presence with us to encourage us, and number two, we miss God's counsel. We would never know what God would have told us. Oh, friend of mine, it pays to wait on God. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31 declares, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. It pays to wait on God, friend of mine. If God says, wait on me, to instruct you about building that house, about whether or not to marry that man or woman? If God says, wait on my counsel concerning which school your child should attend or whether or not you should proceed to surgery? If God says, wait on my counsel as to whether or not your family should relocate at this time or whether or not you should leave your present job? If God says, wait, my friend, Wait prayerfully on God to speak with you. God will never fail you. God will never fail you. We are encouraged to wait patiently for the coming of the Lord. James chapter 5 verse 7 and verse 8 says, Be patient therefore, be patient therefore brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman, the farmer waited for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Matthew chapter 24 verses 44, 48, 49 and 50 and 51 presents the opposite of not waiting on the coming of Christ. Matthew 24 says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. He don't have time to wait, he can't wait. My Lord delayeth his coming. And if that evil servant shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, 
and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. O friend of mine, one Campbell Morgan says, and I quote, Waiting for God is not laziness. Waiting for God is not going to sleep. Waiting for God is not the abandonment of effort. Waiting for God means, first, activity on the command. Second, readiness for any new command that may come. And third, the ability to do nothing until the command is given. End of quote. O oh, friend of mine, David says in Psalm 27 and verse 14, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Again, Psalm 27 and verse 14, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Friend of mine, let us not become too busy to wait on God. Wait, David says, wait, I say. On the inspiration, David says, wait, I say, on the Lord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much that to wait on you is not to waste time. As a matter of fact, when we wait on you and spend time with you, you make the rest of the time that remains to us productive and fulfilling. Help us to heed your counsel in Psalm 27 and verse 14 and wait on the Lord. Father, we present these two prayer requests before you. We are praying for someone, Lord, who is requesting a house and a vehicle for ministry. Someone is requesting a house and a vehicle for ministry. Father, this person is making a request to do your work and we ask their Lord that quickly and swiftly you would answer this particular prayer that this person will have the means to share the good news of salvation that Christ died so we can be saved from sin and the wrath to come and that Christ is coming soon to claim his faithful children and so please provide a home and a vehicle for this person so that they could do ministry and I trust ministry in the way that you would approve. Father, we're praying also for this other individual who wants to be happy and to have a closer walk with you. Father, we know it brings joy to your heart when there are people who want to have a closer walk with you. So please answer this person speedily, Lord. This person is asking for financial help. And Father, you promise that as we return your own in tithes and offerings, you will open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing. You said in Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Please provide for this person. And Father, this person is also asking your blessing on their children, especially for one child who has an anxiety problem. And so Father, we ask your blessing on the children. If in any way Satan is harassing them and they can't explain what is going on, we pray that you will break his hold on them. Destroy his influence about them and help their Lord that this child would be calm. Create the atmosphere of peace and love in the home and whatever would contribute to the calm that would cause this child not to be anxious. If there's something that this child needs to talk about as the reason for the anxiety, give the child the wisdom and the courage and the words to speak. And so Father, we lift before you this family. Bless this person, grant them a closer walk with you, grant them a closer walk with you. Bless them financially, Lord. Bless their children. May they grow up to be loving to both God and man. May they excel in life. Be with all the other prayer requests we have placed before you. Please answer them, Lord, in the right way and at the right time. And Father, we lay all our plans before you today to be carried out or given up as your providence shall indicate. And we thank you in advance for a happy and a productive day in jesus name amen and amen